Okay, everyone, and welcome to Art Starts Explorers. Uh, I apologize for the technical difficulties this morning. If you started the previous stream and then uh, uh, were kicked out, it was just because I had started the video in portrait and I wanted it to be horizontal so everyone could see our space. So I'm gonna pull this away because we are go. We're gonna get started with this week's Arts Arts Explorers. So if you have had a chance to join us in previous weeks, welcome back. And if this is your first session with us, um, you, you are very welcome. We are, we're, we're delighted to have you with us this week. Um, this is a slightly different setup than I have done in the last couple of weeks because this week we are exploring tracing. And um, in the little micro gallery that I built, uh, while it would be really fun to try and get my little micro guest to uh, to trace across the camera, I thought that this might be a little bit easier. So don't worry, micro is still here with us, um, but we're going to uh, pretend like this space is a wall and you are looking straight at a wall and that this is like my window to the outside world. So more on that, but first I just wanted to get our creative and our imaginations fired up thinking about this space as a wall and this being a window. Uh, and so while we're warming up our brains, this seems like a good time for me to review our three rules of explores. Always worth looking over, even if you've been here um, multiple times. We have three rules that we like to explore. Uh, that we like to have in mind when we are exploring together with our friends and family. The first one is respect. We like to practice respect by respecting ourselves. And that means that we're going to check in with ourselves and see how we're feeling today. Maybe we're not feeling super creative and we just want to listen to the feed today. And that's fine. That's okay. Maybe uh, we woke up on the wrong side of the bed or we ran out of our favorite breakfast cereal and we're kind of grumpy and that's okay. You can start this video or start this uh, workshop kind of grumpy and then express that. Try that while you're working through um, the art making today and then allow yourself to feel however you feel at the end of the workshop. We also uh, practice respect by giving that same respect to other people. So maybe you're feeling great, but your grandma or your neighbor who you've invited over to do this art making with isn't feeling so great. That's okay. Just let them feel the way that they feel. We practice respect with our tools. So maybe we'll be using our tools in ways that they weren't necessarily designed to be used, but that doesn't mean that we can't respect them by cleaning them up when we're done or if somebody else is using a tool, we can use our words um, or our language to ask them if they could uh, give it to us when they were they are finished. Or if somebody else is waiting for the tools, you can be aware of that. And if you need it for a long time, maybe you can lend them the, uh, the tool first so they can use it and then they can give it back to you. And then uh, finally, uh, we want to practice respect by acknowledging the land. And so I'm coming to you today streaming from the unceded uh, territory of the Coast Salish people. Um, in particular, I would like to name and acknowledge the Musqueam, uh, Squamish, and tsleil nations. Um, and I am trying my best to be a respectful guest on this land as I invite you all to play and explore together along with me. The second rule of explorers is that nothing is for keeps. So everything that we make today is just for trying out, for playing. And that means that if something is going really well and really good, I challenge you to try something completely different. What happens if you rip up the drawing that you were working on? What happens if you start again? What happens if you close one eye? And so it's all about asking questions um, and allowing things to happen as they happen. When we have expectations, sometimes uh, like a picture in our brain, if we focus on that and it doesn't turn out the way we expect it, we can be really disappointed. So nothing is for keeps. Everything is just for trying it out. Take things from the recycling bin. Pull a uh, paper that already has drawings on it. Try to try and use things that aren't precious, aren't new, aren't super special because we're just trying things out. And then we're all finished. 
We're going to clean it up. And we're going to put it away. We're going to either uh, destroy it, crumple it, see what happens when we crumple, put it in the recycling bin, but we're just going to move it along and we're not going to keep it. So nothing is for keeps. And then the third thing is no expectations. So I kind of talked about this here is that when we have a picture in our mind, we can be really disappointed when it doesn't turn out the way we expected it. So all ideas are good ideas. And if something's going really well, try something completely different. This is all about trying. So always ask yourself, what happens if? And if you know the answer, then you're not really exploring. You already know. So try and make it something really wild, something you would never try before. What happens if I try something a little bit new? So those are our three rules of explorers, and we're going to keep those in mind as we explore today. And what we are exploring today, as I said earlier, was tracing. So this is the first of two weeks that we're going to be exploring tracing. And um, you can see here that I've got my handy viewfinder. And if you've uh, uh, participated in any of our previous workshops uh, or watched our first ever uh, theme video on uh, framing, you would have a, um, oh my goodness, <laughs> my, my brain shut down, a um, viewfinder. <laughs> and you can see this week what I did was I took a transparency. And so a transparency is just this plastic piece that I pulled out of an envelope that I had in my recycling bin. Um, and then I taped it to the back so that it can pretend to be like a window. And so when I'm working on my tracing space here today, what I recommend you do is that you you try this as well, but on your windows. And what you can do is, is that, so if this is your window and you're looking out this way, you can take a piece of paper, and here I'm going to rip the corner, just so you got a piece of paper, put it up on there, and then tape the corners so that you can make your own kind of light box. Again, if you have been with us previous weeks for the shadows workshop, I talked about the difference between a shadow box and a light box. And a shadow box was basically same same thing, this window, but we had a piece of wax paper behind it. And then when the light behind it, so like the sun or if you had a flashlight or whatever, when you came between the light source and the shadow box, you cast a shadow, you, you projected a shadow, you placed a shadow up on the side of the shadow box. But now what we're doing is we're doing a light box. So if I turn on my light box here, there we go. Um, you can see that if this was the sun, right, coming through, this makes this paper a little bit easier to see. So if I was going to draw a picture, and you can just draw, right, right on the paper that you have stuck onto your window, is my happy face. If you take another piece of paper, right, you can see the image through. The sun is actually helping to make the light box or the window allow us to see the image through. And that's basically what we're going to be exploring today. So the great thing about tracing is that it allows you to try um, a whole bunch of things really, really fast. And um, that means that if you have an idea, but you're not really sure how to finish it. So for example, let's say you have a character. So I'm going to draw a character. Actually, you know what? I'm also going to turn off that big light so that you can see this a little clearer. Step up here and then turn down my light. There we go. Okay, so now we've got a really atmospheric space. All right, so I have started to draw a character. There's my head, there's my body, there's my face, and then I'm just going to leave it like that because I don't know what kind of clothing I want this character to have. And I want to try out a bunch of different things. And so right now what you could do is you could just draw it in pencil and it would be really easy to erase. You could draw a couple of different ones um, and, and try it in, in different versions. But what's nice about this is that because I drew this in marker, it's going to show up really clearly when I put up other pieces of paper on the window. So that means that really, really fast, what I can do is here, I'm going to bring my paper over to the side so only some of it is seen. And I'm going to go, hmm, I wonder what this character would look like if they were wearing a t-shirt. And so I'm going to draw as if 
this character was wearing a t-shirt. And I decided I would pick orange. Um, but I'm not really sure what else they're going to be wearing, so maybe orange is the wrong color. I'm doing this really fast because I'm just trying it out. And then I think, I think this character would look a little more interesting if it had arms. So I'm going to add a pair of arms. There we go. Really stubby hand at the end. And so there's that t-shirt. And then uh, maybe they are wearing a, know, let's see what kind of pencil crayons I pull out. They're going to wear gray pants. That makes sense. Okay, so then I'm going to fast, fast draw a pair of pants onto my character. And, yep, I don't really like those pants. I don't want gray pants. I want something different. So rather than having to draw the whole thing over again, I can just pick up that piece of paper, right? And shift it over to the side. And I don't even have to do it this way, right? I could turn it around this way. Depends on how much space you have. If you pulled your piece of paper from the recycling bin, maybe you have a really small piece of paper. If you have a really big piece of paper, then you can challenge yourself to move it around and try and fit in as many different drawings as you can. That's a great challenge see how much of a paper that you can fill out before you have to go to a new piece of paper. Okay, so I decided I didn't like the gray pants. So I'm going to quickly take my orange and I'm going to redo my t-shirt just so that I can see the new color with the thing that I liked, which was the, the orange shirt. And remember, this is just my window right? If, if, you're, if you're following along right now, whether or not you have a TV or an iPad or your phone, and you bring this over to the window with your family and friends while you are trying this, you just, this is my window right here. And you should be able to see the same thing um, unless you're doing it at night. And that would be an interesting challenge. You know, does, does your light box, does the window work the same when you're trying it at night? Does it actually uh, create a light box? I know the answer, but do you know the answer? And you should check it out, see what happens. Okay, so I'm gonna add those hands back in. Hands, there we go. Okay, so I did not like gray. I think instead green is the way to go. Yeah, there we go. I really like the green pants. That's perfect. There we go. Real nice and fast. So I've decided that I like those colors and I was able to do that really fast rather than having to draw this multiple times, right? And I could keep trying. Look, at I've got that space over there. I could draw on top of it. And this is just a way of trying. Remember, we're not making anything for keeps. This is something called prototyping. This is when you try something out before you do something finished. So if you wanted to draw a picture for, say, your guardian for Mother's Day or you wanted to send a picture to a friend through the mail and uh, you, you need to plan out your picture to begin with, you can do this kind of thing where you try multiple versions of a picture and different ideas and try them out and then you don't have to feel disappointed if it's not perfect while you try it and then you have a guide to do your final drawing. Okay, this is also great because I've decided that this character needs a haircut to go along with their excellent outfit. So I'm going to start, oh, actually I'm going to start in the outfit that I didn't really like so that I can not worry about adding something over here that I, um, I maybe really don't like. But this, remember, this is just a trial. So maybe this character has static, static hair. Yeah, there we go. Oh, and maybe because they have the static hair, I'm going to add ears and maybe some long earrings to match. What? I actually really like that. That's cool. I like that. But maybe I'll try and see. You can see without the head there, it's just the additional things that I've added. Turn that around. Ta-da! Okay. So now, uh, let's say this character is going to go and have a perm. The ears again because I, I like that. 
and, and that's something else, right? As you learn things, you can keep copying them over. I could also go down to this character here and go, okay, well, I actually really want ears every time. And then you can just add it here. And maybe, you know what? I, I do want a belt. I always want this character to have a black belt. So I'm going to add the belt right onto the drawing underneath. And now when I change their clothing, check it out, right? The belt and the ears are always there when I try it. Here, can I line that up again? Here are the ears, but there's the belt, right? Well, I could trace it on here if I decided, oh yeah, you know what? The black belt was cool, but I actually want a striped belt. So you can add extra details up on top. Okay, so we were trying hair, I got distracted there. So I really like that static hair, but what happens if I give this character a perm? I give them curly hair. It's really, oh, actually I want it to be really big. Oh, and then I can try different things. Okay, you know what, I like that, yeah. I like that big curly hair that goes with their really detailed belt. Now I can further take them to the salon and pick their hair color. So let's try to begin with yellow. Do I like that? It's okay. Yellow is okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another layer on top because now I just want to focus on the hair. I got the I've got the the pants down. I like that. So I'm gonna put a little check mark to remind myself. Yeah, I like that. But I'm not sure about the hair. So I'm gonna take my piece of paper and I'm gonna quick draw the face back on here. And it's really, really easy, right? To make those copies. And actually I can do a few of them. So there's face number one. There's face number two. here. Really, really fast, right? And all of a sudden you have all these copies that you can try this out and you're less worried about making a mistake because you have all these options. Oh, that was funny. <laughs> that, that went far to the side. And then over here, and I'm going really fast, but generally when you're trying tracing, it's a good idea to slow down because you're, tr you're looking for the lines. And this is also a good way to teach yourself how to be looking at pictures, right? Looking at the details that you want to copy. You don't have to copy everything, but then you're thinking about which pieces that you want. Okay, so I can actually pull this whole thing away and just focus on these faces because these are the things that I wanted to try. So I'm gonna, here, what's this one? This one's brown marker. And so I really, oh, you know what? I want to make sure that I have that hair because I liked that style, but I wasn't sure about the color. And so I don't even need this main one here, right? I'm just using the hair to repeat what I wanted to do. And you don't have to be doing a person, right? Like you could be doing uh, paint, uh, a house, different colors of houses. You could draw a dog. You could draw an idea of something that you want to make and then just color it in different colors, right? Just so you can check it out uh, before you make the thing. So there you go, there's, there's the hair. I'm gonna quick draw the hair over here just one more time in, in black so that I have it. And then I can take that, that tracing piece, my template, my original away. There you go, oh, and then bangs. Okay, cool. So there are really, really quick, right? I didn't have to try and copy by just looking, which is a good thing to practice, but this week we're practicing you know, uh, tracing. But this was really, really fast for me to try this out. So I don't have to worry at all. I can just go, oh, do I like brown? Right, less than, less than 30 seconds to be able to check and then compare. Uh, I don't know. I mean, the brown's okay, and the yellow's okay, but 
Maybe, maybe what I actually want. Oh, you know what I think I want? I don't think I want gray to match the pants. Yeah, that's, that feels better. That's more like what I wanted. Great. Okay. So I didn't even have to fill out all of these. It was really fast. I knew that that was what I wanted. So what I want to do now is I want to take this outfit that I liked and this hairstyle and I'm just going to rip that right out. I mean, if you have a pair of scissors, you could do that, but I mean, any chance that I can have to rip paper, I'm going to take it. I love ripping paper. Okay. So I have isolated or I have taken just that one piece. I'm going to move that over there. There. So there are the pants that I liked. That was the hair I was okay with. There's the hairstyle. I'm going pretty slow, but that's okay. Remember, this is just this is just draft paper, so we don't really care. And then I'm going to take my person, line up my hairstyle. Yep, that looks good. Then I'm going to line up. And you know what? Because this is my window, you would have to be taping things. So I'm going to slow down and I'm going to add some tape to this because that's what you would be doing on the window. So there, that's going to be taped in the corner. And that's also really good when you're tracing. If you do have a light box um, or... If you have an iPad or a phone or a tablet, sorry, not an iPad, but a, just any kind of tablet um, that is going to cast light through a piece of paper, you could do that exact same thing. And this just helps to make sure that the original drawing, the, the tracing template, isn't going to be moving around, right? So there we go. There's my outfit, the outfit that I liked. I'm going to tape, tape that down. Great. And then we've got our hairstyle. Perfect. All right. So this is, this was my prototype, right? I really, I really wanted to try different things. Um, and this is the outfit that I actually want. So now, instead of having to go all the way from scratch again, I can take, and maybe not today, right? Because we're just trying things out. But for future, what you could do is now you've got your nice piece of paper. And you can take um, a pencil, which I didn't bring over to my workstation this week, so I'm just going to do it all in light brown, and that's fine. Um, but I'm going to really lightly draw the parts that I like onto this final piece of paper. And that way, when I am ready to draw my final picture, I've got the outline of what I want to do, and I don't have to worry about making a mistake or smudging it or um, uh, deciding after I've made a mark that I had wished I'd done something else. I'd already tried those things. I could also make multiple cards, right? I said earlier you were making a card. Well, if you were going to make cards for lots of people and you wanted them to all have the same picture, this is a really great way of being able to quickly do your picture for uh, lots of different cards, right? Um, pants. I don't want to forget my belt. Great. So now, pull that away. And there's my character. Right? And now I can color this in. Now I can take another piece of paper, do it again, and that is a quick way of prototyping an image together. I'm so curious about what you're making um, on your windows at home, or if you're just listening, what you make later in the week. I want to take this opportunity to say that we would love to see what you are making at home um, or in your classroom. And so if you wanted to send us uh, pictures uh, on our Facebook page, we would really, we would really love to see it. Okay, I'm going to put that over to the side. So I talked about speed when we were exploring things uh, using tracing. And um, speed is great, but consistency is another thing that you can be practicing when you uh, try things out with tracing. And consistency just means same, sameness, how, how much of a copy things are. And so if you're trying to do something that's really, really exact, having a tracing template, something that you can copy, 
can help you stay really, really consistent. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a fast pattern. But at, at first, I'm going to start by making um, a little stencil, making a little um, template that I can quickly copy. And you'll see how fast I can make a, um, a pattern um, on my final page. So I'm going to take, which one? How about I take my black? Is that black? Nope, that's dark blue. <laughs> that's, that's the big problem about doing this in the small or sort of doing this kind of in the dark. I can't, can't really see any of my other things, but you can see this area really uh, well, and that's important to me. So I think what I'm going to do, uh, actually, I'm going to start with a heart. Yeah, I like that. And then I'm going to draw four lines around it. And that's going to be the basis. Yeah, that's good. Uh, that's going to be the ba like the basis, the bottom, the template. That's going to be the repeating pattern for uh, for my my larger pattern. So I'm going to take a piece of paper again, and this is just printer paper, right? I just took some pieces of paper from my printer, but um, remember, I told you you should look in your recycling bin, so you could use the back letters, you could use um, receipts work really well because they're very see through. Um, and if there are words around it, that's fine. Remember, we're just trying things out. We're just exploring. None of this is for keeps. So I'm going to show you that if I trace over this base pattern, what I can do is, is that I can really quickly line up, right? Oh, whoops, other way. <laughs> I can line up one of these lines so you can see here that line was the same. So I know that now this is the same distance from here. And so I can keep some consistency or sameness as I create this pattern. Here, bring it back up again, right over here. And it could be like, I was struggling to figure out which way I need to go, right? The template stays here, but I need to figure out where, where next I'm going to place things. And so it does take a little bit of thinking, um, but it's easier and faster. You don't really have to think about um, well, what goes next. And sometimes when I'm drawing patterns really quickly, um, I can mess up and, and go, oh, whoops, I meant to put um, a heart here but I actually put it there because uh, I got distracted or saw this one. And I want to keep these spaces consistent. So you do need to slow down a little bit. Tracing is about um, efficiency and speed. So about um, how correct or how precise you are and being able to, to go quickly, uh, but not so quickly that you're not, you know, you're not thinking. Because all art making should be about a little bit of thinking. What happens if requires you to put your brain on and go and ask those questions, right? Okay, so I'm going to add a few more of these just so you can see the full pattern as it goes out. Um, but I have definitely made patterns in the past where I've gone, oops, and put uh, put things in the wrong place because I, was, I wasn't really thinking uh, or I was distracted or thinking about the next thing I was doing. Um, and this is also a good way if you're if you're ever feeling stressed out, right? If you're if you're feeling nervous or distracted, and you just need to take some time um, to get focused again, pattern making is a really great way of practicing uh, being present and uh, mindfulness. And so you can just kind of um, trust what you're doing, and the the repetition, the doing things over and over again, can be really very calming. So you're going over to a window, you're taking a, a break, uh, maybe you're bringing your friend over and you're going to have a conversation with them while you do this. Very, very calming to just do something over and over and over again. Okay, so this is the last one that I'm going to add to my pattern, but you can keep going, right? Because we're just trying things out. Here we go. Check it out. So from this one piece right here, I was able to pretty quickly 
and pretty consistently make sure that this pattern was starting to go and I could just keep going across the page. But at this point, this is just one pattern and I want to be even more efficient. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this in half. And I'm going to see what happens. And the spacing might not be perfect again, right? Because I didn't really measure this out. I'm just going to see what happens. And so now what's happening is, is um, because I folded this in half, when I start drawing on this surface here, it's not going to be on the same side as this piece here, right? Because if I wanted it to be on the same side of the paper, I would want to draw here. But then I can't really, can't really see it there, right? So if I go like this on the window, it's going to be on the back, right? So picture side here and there. So what, what am I going to do so I can get the image here? Oh, I know. I'll fold it this way, right? Because on the window, we're going to be able to see it. And even though this is on the back side, right? So that's, that's where we drew. This, the light on my light box is so bright that it will actually go through both sides of paper. And now I can still get it on the correct side. So I'm going to take this down just like everybody else who is doing this on their windows. All right, and where did my glue go? I think that's my glue. Yep. And then, now I can really go fast, right? I don't need to line anything up. I know this is already lined up. It's definitely very relaxing to just do these things over and over again. This is a great way when you're drawing pictures, when you're drawing a bigger picture, to make your drawings look more completed, more finished uh, by adding patterns to them. And as you start making these kind of uh, exploring uh, patterns, you can, um, they, they become part of your go-to, something that you can always pull up and try again. Um, and eventually you can make your drawings feel like they're all part of a similar story just by having the same pattern behind some of the pictures, right? So if you, every time maybe, uh, let's say you were gonna draw a comic or a, a graphic story where you had a whole bunch of pictures and you were trying to tell a story with pictures, every time a character showed up on the page, maybe you have this heart pattern or maybe you have a lightning design or uh, water in the background to show that they are talking from underwater. And that gives a visual cue or an indicator or a sign to the person that is checking out what you're doing that you have, um, that you're in a specific place or that you're, you're uh, talking to a specific character. It's a really fast way of cluing someone in. Okay, so there we go. That, that took, what, two minutes? to get a whole bunch of patterns down, a pretty complex pattern. Take that off and I'm gonna open it up. Ooh, check it out. There we go, there's my pattern. And so I guess this wasn't a perfect uh, lineup, right? Because this space here I think is a little bit larger than that, but that's okay, right? Like, because we're just trying this out. Now we've got two pages here of these patterns and I could go along and take my original, there we go, there it is, and go, all right, how do I want to line this up? Okay, it's supposed to actually be like that. There we go. Do you see how much overlap there is? So that's how it would have been if it had been completely consistent. So I'm going to take this down and I'm going to fill that in. Oh, I just keep putting down my pencil crayon. There it is. Okay. Now I'm going to fill in the heart right here. And then I'm going to move this up here so it matches again. There we go. And then one more down here. I might fall off the page. That's okay. Oh, you know what? I don't have any hearts down there, so I'm going to leave that one. There you go. There's the full pattern if it was all in one page. And so now what I could do is, is I could take a clear piece of tape if I wanted to, or 
again, because we're just tracing and we're trying those things out. Now I have that big long pattern. Now I can take another piece of paper and keep drawing that pattern, right? And so if I wanted to say bring, oh, I know, I'm gonna bring this character back into the scene, put them right there. And all of a sudden now they are in a room. Oh, I, want, I don't want to forget the hair. Now they're in a room where the wallpaper design in the background it are all those hearts, right? And you can check out as I'm adding more layers of paper, it's harder and harder to see. And that would be a really fun challenge, right? If you were to take this over to the, um, to the window and see how many pieces of paper you can put down before you can't actually see the picture anymore. Or if it's just barely there, how much memory you've got from just a couple of clues of what you can see. You probably can't see anything. This is probably a really dark line for you. But for me, I can just barely see the outline of the hair there, of the face there, and of the body there. So that's a fun challenge, right? What happens if you add a whole bunch of extra paper to what you're trying right now in the window? Okay, so really, really fast. I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna take my Sharpie this time. I'm going to quickly redraw what I can see underneath. Curly hair definitely makes you have to slow down because there's all those bumps. Probably would have been faster if I'd drawn um, straight hair, but lesson learned. I learned that by trying this out. Again, the t-shirt. Belt, arms. I'm going to fix that on a little bit this time, right? Because I can, it's a new layer. All right, and then they're in that cool room with the background. wallpaper of whatever room they're in. That's, a, that's something else, right, for locations. If you were telling a story and you wanted to show that a character had come back to a location that you've seen before, having a pattern background is a quick way of showing that you are in a location that somebody has seen before. Really, really fast, just part of those because that's all I can see. And yeah, I think that was it. Okay, so that was taking all of those pieces underneath and check it out. I've got a exact version of what I tried over here and now I can just color that in. And that's also another really great way of making a coloring book. Uh, if you have a picture that you can print out on your printer of maybe a friend or um, a memory, you could then take it over to the window and you could trace it, just the outlines, onto another piece of paper and now you've got a coloring activity to try later on. So that was making a picture from all those layers. I'm going to pull this off of my window, put it over to the side, and take this one as well. Okay, so now that we've been exploring layering, um, it's kind of like revealing a secret, isn't it? So if we were going to draw something on one piece of paper and then turn off the light or take it away from the window, we know that it becomes that piece of paper again and you can't necessarily see what was, uh, what was layered underneath. So this, I think now what we're gonna try and do is we're going to create a uh, secret, a way of writing a secret to somebody. Um, and you could use this to pass notes. Maybe you want to send something to a friend and that they've always got the key that they can fill in all the information and now you can keep it secret from someone because they don't, uh, they don't have that key information. So I'm going to call this page my key. Oh, I can make that a little clearer. There we go, key. And so what this page is, is that this is the one that you have given your friend. And they're going to, oh, I don't want to use Sharpie on my whiteboard. That's good to know. Um, this is the piece that they're going to keep um, always so that every um, thing that you give them afterwards, 
they're going to be able to use to decrypt or decode or unlock the other piece of paper. And I'll show you what I'm, I'm going to do. But I don't actually know what I'm going to try because I'm exploring along with you as well. So maybe what I want is, uh, maybe it's where I've hidden the candy in my room. That seems like a good one. So I want, I want my, uh, my best friend or maybe just my mom to know where the candy is, but I don't want my uh, sister to know or I don't want the dog to know or whatever that secret is going to be. So I'm going to take that extra piece of paper. I'm going to put it up on top. And I'm going to draw my room. So my room has the walls. Oh, and then the door is on this side. So I'm going to leave a little space for the door. This would be fun for a treasure hunt, right? If you wanted to do um, a treasure map for your house or if you wanted to do it outside, it's, um, as we're continuing to practice social distancing, you could draw a map for your friend of the neighborhood and then you could hide the messages. And so you've left the messages and then you drop off this in their door and now they can go check it out. Or a classroom, maybe the teacher could create um, the neighborhood or a park that everybody's going to. And then everybody has maybe a different key or different information that you have to go and put together to be able to unlock. Okay, so I've decided this is going to be my room and then this is going to be bed and I'm looking down so just like you are looking down um, this is what they call a bird's eye view so you have to pretend like you're the lamp at the top and you're looking down at the room as if you were hanging from the ceiling so I'm going to make sure that everybody knows that this is my bed because there's my covers my striped bedspread maybe I'll put a little pillow here there we go there's my pillow and then I've got a toy box in the corner. And then maybe this is my bookshelf that I've got over here. And there's like a vase up on top. And then this is my closet over here. And there are two doors. And then uh, that's where I hang all my clothes from. There we go. Okay, so there's my room. And then over here, I'm going to write the candy is hidden dot 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 and then pull this away. So this is the piece that you can be uh, giving people if you want to keep it a secret, right? You hand this over um, to Let's say you're gonna hand this to your best friend's mom. And you say, okay, I need you to give this to, um, to my best friend when they get home today. But you don't want them to know where your candy is. So you give them this piece because your friend, you already gave them the key. And on the key, right, which we're gonna put up on top, we're gonna quick redraw the outside of the room just so that they can line things up. And that's important, right? Because if we don't give them something that they know to line up, then maybe they'll take their key and they'll go like this. It's like, oh, this will be clearer when I finish, when I finish drawing everything right there. But, okay, so what I wanna do is in a different color. Uh, what did I pick up? I think I picked up red and it had, is broken. So that's not good. Uh, what about this one? Oh, this is red too, good. Okay, so I'm gonna mark off that my candy is hidden in this corner of my, um, of my closet. So that's where the candy is hidden. And then maybe I'll also write um, under, under the, I don't know, teddy bear. Because that, that seems like a good place to hide my candy. Okay. So you take that away. What? That doesn't mean anything, right? So if somebody found this key, this secret part that would unlock it, they'd just go, well, this is just a box with an X. What's under the, the teddy bear? And where? I don't know which teddy bear you're talking about. They need that 
second piece to be able to unlock. And all of a sudden, they've got all the information. They take it over the window. The candy is hidden under the teddy bear right there. Right? So this was the reason that um, I put that box there, right? Something that is in common, something that is the same between these two pieces of paper is the outline of the room so that they know when they put it on the window that that's the part that they have to line up, that it has to be the same. Because otherwise, they could have this and go, okay, well, uh, oh no, I don't know where this is hidden. Or maybe they'll go, this is the room, and then the room across the hallway besides the door, that's where the candy is hidden. So by giving more things for people to know that they, have, they can line up, then it's easy for them to decipher or to figure out the message that you've put in there. So this is also something uh, you could make it, you could make it even more um, abstract. So right now I've written down that the candy is hidden under the bear and somebody who's pretty smart would be able to figure this out. But you could go and just start making some pictures. You could tell a story by adding um, and taking things away. So what if we wanted to make um, a show, right? We wanted to use our window and we wanted to tell a story. And we don't want it, um, we don't want it to be just a comic. We want it to actually be a kind of puppet show. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our lines and then they become the action on the page. So again, oh, I keep forgetting because I have the luxury of using a light box, but you will be using your, uh, your window. I'm gonna tape that down. Oh, before I forget, because I think we've only got about 10 minutes left in the workshop, I wanted to pull out, yeah, I'm gonna turn off this over here, there we go. I wanted to pull out a tablet just to show you. Um, you're probably gonna to wanna to make sure, well, I think this is pretty dim. I usually have it pretty dim so that the uh, batteries don't die. There we go. So I've got it really bright now. And so if you have a tablet um, that you're using at home, um, you could also go and find a picture. Oh, is that not drying? Yep, there we go. Why is it not drying? Oh, oh whoa. <laughs> I mean for that to happen. Okay, I think because my Bluetooth is turned off, my pencil is not working. Can I go like this? technical issues. Bear with me. Hopefully you're still trying things um, at home um, on your window. And there we go. There's my Bluetooth. There's my Bluetooth. Okay. Bring that up. Is it still really huge? Bring that down as well. No, I can't find my pencil. Okay, that's okay. I can use my hand. This is being silly now. So I'll put my pencil to the side. So you draw a picture um, on your on your tablet, or you get one from the internet or whatever it's going to be, then what you can do is you can take your piece of paper and you can just put it on top of your tablet and start drawing, right? And you don't want to press really hard, right? Because you want to be careful. This, this is, uh, especially if it isn't yours, right? If you're borrowing this from um, your classroom or from your guardian, um, you don't, you want to make sure that you don't you don't hurt the, the iPad. So this is probably not something you would want to use a marker. You'd probably want to only use pencil or pencil crayon when you try using your tablet because you don't want it to uh, mark the surface. But there you go. Real fast, I was able to trace the outside of that drawing onto there because this is my drawing program. As I continue to make marks here, it continued to make marks on here. But if you just had a picture on the internet and you put it down, um, you wouldn't be changing the surface underneath. You'd just be able to quick trace whatever you had on your tablet. So for this week, yes, this is my window. But for you, if you, um, if you have the privilege of having access to um, a tablet or a phone, you could totally do that um, as your own version of a light box. So uh, before I was talking about let's tell a story. And so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the scene or the background. And if you've been making with us the previous weeks, you know all about crafting scenes and making backgrounds. And basically, this is just where, where the, the action is going to take place. 
Um, and so we're going to ask ourselves all of those awesome questions that we like to ask when we start thinking about a story. And I'm going to, I'm going to, oh, I'm going to use two because I realized that the Sharpie went through the paper last time. And then I'm going to write down some W questions. So I'm going to um, ask myself who, I'm going to ask myself where, and I'm going to ask myself what. And this is just so I can pick my story really fast. So I'm going to go who is a bunny, where is the forest, I don't know, I'm just coming up with things, there is no right answer, right? And what is their searching for the magic carrot? There you go. That's, that's what I've decided my story is going to be about. So um, if my background needs to be a forest, I'm going to draw my forest real quick. There's the dirt. Some rocks and let's quick draw some trees and I'm thinking about this like a stage right because we're going to tell a story using this piece of paper and so I kind of want a place where my characters can interact with a lot of stuff behind them but I mean I have some trees back there that's cool okay there's my brown glad I found the brown and not the black this is way better in brown and then let's find my green. There we go. I have a whole bunch of leaves up here. Oh, there's some greenery over here. I'm going to go a little lighter over here because it's a little lighter. And if you're doing this on the window, right, if you're doing this with um, a marker that isn't a Sharpie that won't go through, you don't have to press really hard, right? It's going to, it's going to leave a mark without having to press hard at all. If you're using a pencil crayon, um, you do want to go kind of light, right? You don't want to press too hard in the window um, because you know it's you don't want to break it. But it should be okay if you're if you're uh, if you're just drawing at this you know this hardness. But yeah, I mean, do this do this with your family, do this with your um, your teachers so that they can uh, they can be checking it out and and ask, right? If you're not sure. Ask people around you, and you don't even have to ask an adult. You could ask your, your friend or your classmate, uh, your sister, your siblings. Um, just ask them if they think it's too hard. And between you, I'm sure you can figure it out. Okay, so uh, here, I'm going to quickly put some grass down here. Grass, 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 because we're in the forest. But this is kind of the path that I want. Uh, maybe the path comes... Oh, whoops. Okay, uh, I picked up the wrong color, so I guess there's some water here. Well, that's fine. So we got a stream in the background. That's fine. Add some grass, right? Because remember, there's no, there's no mistakes. We're just trying things out here. Nothing's being planned. This is just the prototype. Okay, there we go. I've got my forest. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a bunny. And this is something that animators do all the time. Animators, the people that are making cartoons that you like to watch. That's another brown. Where is that black one? Uh, I'm only finding brown. That's fine. This is a darker brown. So animators do this all the time. And what they do is, is that, here, I'm going to bring this over to the side so you can see it a little clearer. They start by doing um, an initial picture. And can you draw up a bunny rabbit is going to be the question today. Sure. There's my bunny. Okay. So there's my bunny sitting there and there's the legs. Okay. So I've got my, my bunny, there's my whiskers. Okay, stop drawing. <laughs> there's my bunny and my bunny is sitting. But if I want my bunny to be jumping, what animators will do is that, now with computers, it's a little bit different. But once upon a time, they, they, they had to use paper. And what they did was they used this paper called onion skin. And what it was, if you've ever um, cooked, or if you haven't cooked before, next time somebody is cooking with an onion, ask them to show you, and you can see in an onion that there's all these little layers, and every layer is really, really thin. It's really translucent, so that you can you can see in between it, and so that's why they call that tracing paper onion skin. Um, and so to be able to kind of take things in common for your bunny that you want, 
but to change something a little bit. So for this one, what I want to do is a uh, bunny is starting to get up. So maybe their body has moved over here and now their leg is starting to stand up here. And their body comes over here. This kind of looks like a turkey and that's okay. There we go. So there's the bunny, right? But the bunny has stood up now. And so that's a fast way when you're telling a story to be able to um, have things in common so people know that this is still the bunny, um, but to change one thing about it so that um, you can show that things are happening as, um, as you tell the story. Okay, there's one other piece that I'm going to need. I'm just gonna rip from one of these other pieces of paper. And what it is, is I'm gonna need a carrot. Okay, so I've got my green. Yep, I know I've got a green. And then do I have an orange? Yeah, that's that's good. Okay, so I'm gonna quick draw some carrots down here. And there's the top of the carrot. Okay, and so my carrots are in the forest right there. And then I'm gonna draw uh, one last thing, which is the reveal. The reveal, which is the magic carrot. And so, oh, I keep putting this down. Here is my, that's red. There's orange, green. Okay, so there's my magic carrot. Add the green. And then I'm going to add some lines just to show, do, 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 it's magic. There we go. Rip the top off. And then with the last couple of minutes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell a story using this. So you're on the window, you've got your friends sitting around, and you're, and you're going to tell them a really quick uh, story. So one day we, uh, we find ourselves in a forest. Once upon a time there was a forest, and along came a bunny. The bunny was trying to find food because the bunny was really very hungry. You can see I flipped it around, so now it's going in another direction. Bunny was searching, so hungry. It had been minutes since the bunny had eaten. Where, oh where, could they find food? When suddenly, after seeming to pass the same water over and over again, they came upon a stream where three carrots were growing. Well, they were really, really tired Whew. from all that searching for food. And they really only had energy to pick one carrot. So they snipped. Whew. And realized suddenly that this was the carrot that they've always been hoping for. And with their teeth, they pulled out the carrot and the carrot suddenly started to float above them, Duh! the magic carrot was revealed. But unfortunately for the bunny, they couldn't quite grab it. And then for the rest of the day, this silly, here I'm gonna take something here, this silly carrot followed them around as if making fun of them. It just couldn't seem to get rid of the carrot. And that is my two-second story about the rabbit and the magic carrot. That's fine, right? Because we were just trying something out. I didn't take very long. It was, you saw it right in front of, uh, of you. It took me about a minute to figure out. And this is the way that we can try and we can play with our story. We can practice. We can rehearse before we ever get somebody to come and check out what we're doing, right? This is all part of prototyping. And so maybe uh, you don't actually like how this bunny looks. You can draw it in multiple ways. You decide you want to have a bunny that's sleeping. You want to have a bunny that is trying to come up the, uh, climb up the tree. And you can have all those bunnies ready for when you do your uh, window tracing story. So those are just a few ways that we can explore tracing. And this was only part one of two. Next week, I will be back at my tracing table um, at 11 o'clock on Saturday where we'll continue to explore different ways that you can try tracing um, at home or with your friends or in your classroom. Thank you so much for joining us today. 
Um, last night, I did post a video on tracing um, that has a few more activities as well as some um, vocabulary about tracing. So go and check that out on the Art Starts page. Um, and otherwise, I'm going to start cleaning up. I'll turn the lights back on. And uh, Leah is here. Oh, I completely forgot. I'm so sorry. So I'm sure that if you've been checking out the comments, you've seen that Leah, our program manager, has been here for the entire hour and has been answering any questions that you have. Uh, I'm very sorry for not acknowledging you earlier, Leah. You are essential to this process. So I'm going to leave the video going for another couple of minutes so that if you have any questions at all, we can respond to you. And when this video is all finished, we will uh, save it and then caption it and then put it back up on the Art Starts um, Facebook page as well as our YouTube channel. So thanks so much for joining us and I'll see you next week at 11 o'clock.